The honey bee has several different glands which secrete through the mouth. The number of these glands and their rather awkward names can be confusing. I hope to make this all easier to follow through this video. To begin with, let's think about the functions of the secretory glands. There are three main functions which these glands which secrete to the mouth perform. Firstly, there are secretions which mix with the food. Secondly, there are secretions to nourish larva. These secretions are often termed brood food, or in particular circumstances, royal jelly. Thirdly, there are secretions which are part of chemical communication between the bees. Considering these three categories, broadly speaking, the secretions which mix with food are produced by two pairs of glands. One pair sits just behind the brain, and the other pair sits in the front of the thorax. Both of these pairs have ducts which join together before opening at the back of the mouth. The brood food is produced by a pair of large glands in the worker honeybee which sit in the front of the head. They are above the brain and have ducts which secrete at the front of the mouth. The chemical secretions are produced by a pair of glands on either side of the face which sit in the cheeks or gena, G-E-N-A, and which secrete directly onto the face of the mandibles. Let us look at these glands in a diagram. This is a diagram of the side of a worker bee's head. The left eye and much of the left side of the head have been cut away. The muscles have also been removed and we are left with a diagram of the internal organs. The thick brown structure running from front to back is part of the internal skeleton of the head, the anterior tentorial arm. Just in front of this is another rigid arm which is the strut which supports the cardo. The mouth parts are slung from this strut via the cardo and this allows the proboscis to be moved forwards and backwards. The yellow structure is the brain and in front and behind that are some of the salivary glands that we will be discussing. The green structure is the pharynx in the esophagus and the red round structure is the mandibular gland. The opening here is the occiput where the neck connects to the head and here we can see the aorta, two tracheal branches, the esophagus, the ducts of the thoracic salivary glands that we'll be discussing and the two main trunks of the nervous system. In front of the head we have the antenna, below we have the proboscis and mouth parts sitting just behind the mandibles. If we remove the mandibular gland we see the wall of the fossa. We will remove three further structures, the strut that supports the cardo, the wall of the fossa and finally the cardo itself. The lower part of this and its articulations with the proboscis are not shown in this diagram. This then shows us the cavity of the mouth shown in orange running back from the space between the mandibles. It curves over the top of the proboscis and narrows posteriorly to a thin cavity known as the salivarium into which the combined duct of four of the glands opens at the back of the mouth. If we move forward in the mouth cavity again, we find the opening at the front of the mouth leading towards the pharynx. The pharynx is shown in green and is surrounded by muscles which enable it to be dilated to create suction. Just before, in the transition from the mouth to the pharynx, is a curved plate known as the hypopharyngeal plate. This has a number of sensory receptors lining it which receive stimuli from passing food. This plate has two long tails which run on either side of the pharynx within the muscle wall. 
The duct of the brood food gland, or hypopharyngeal gland as it is known, opens at the front of the hypopharyngeal plate. There are two of these openings, one on each side. If we now go back and look at each of the glands individually and in a little more detail, let us start with the salivary type glands. They are also known as the labial glands for comparison with other insect species. The two thoracic glands stretch well back into the thorax, running along the same path as the esophagus. Groups of the lobules of the gland can also be found around the main tracheae in the neck where they divide to give main branches to the head. The duct of these glands has a small reservoir in each side before the duct runs through the lower part of the neck and passes through the occiput to join the combined duct from the postcerebral glands. The postcerebral glands are dispersed in the area behind the brain, boundaried by the back of the head and the mandibular muscles. The duct of the postcerebral gland runs down the back of the head, being joined with those from the thoracic glands to form a single duct which opens into the salivarium or salivary syringe. From here the secretions run over the top of the prementum and on to the tongue. The postcerebral salivary glands are also known as head glands in some other texts. Both the postcerebral and thoracic salivary glands are found in workers, drones and queens. On the other hand, the brood food gland is only found in the worker. This gland goes through a number of changes over the life of the bee and is most developed early in the bee's life when its duties are within the hive, including feeding the larvae. As the bee matures and becomes a forager, the brood food or hypopharyngeal glands shrink. However, there is some evidence that they continue to produce invertase, the enzyme which splits sucrose to glucose and fructose. This gland also retains the ability to regenerate if a mature bee needs to nurse larvae again. The mandibular glands have a particularly important role in communication. They are most developed in the queen as the secretions of the queen's mandibular glands are fundamental to many of the systems within the hive. Queen substance suppresses queen cell formation, suppresses ovarian development in other workers and maintains the cohesion of the colony. It also has an important role in attracting drones during a mating flight. The queen's mandibular glands also produce a retinue hormone which attracts worker bees around her. In the worker bee, an important product of the mandibular glands is 2-heptanone. Although this was for long considered to be an alarm hormone, current evidence suggests that its main role is as an anaesthetic agent for immobilizing small invertebrate intruders in the hive. The drone has only vestigial mandibular glands. That concludes this summary of the honeybee's glands which secrete through the mouth. Further details about the book Understanding Bee Anatomy are available from this website.